Uh, so we'll go through each of these. This is what it would be like each day. Okay. So negative ten thousand, pretty straightforward, unless um, you're one of the. Uh, I guess it's not rare for this mistake to be made to think that it should be positive ten thousand. Okay. And it doesn't have to do with being right or wrong, it has to do with that agreement that we talked about. We agreed to do things a certain way, a certain order, okay? So what we have here, we talk about the order of operations, just the one that uh, we agreed to use. What do we have here? Where does that fall in the order of operations? Second, it's exponent. And what is this negative out here? What's that doing to this number here? What's the interaction between this negative and this 10? Taking it negative by what operation is a negative plus a 10? Negative 1 times 10. Negative 1 times 10. Negative 1 times whatever this is. So we got ex ex exponents. And we have multiplication. Exponents, according to this, would come first. Um, now, you might think, well, there's a negative 10. That's the number. And you raise it to the fourth. And you raise the number to the fourth. That means you have four factors of that number. Multiply them all together. Right? And so you might think this should be negative 10 times negative 10 times negative 10 times negative 10. And that, I mean, that makes sense. But According to the agreement we've made, what's the agreement about if I want you to do that? Put the parentheses. The parentheses around the whole thing. Then at that point, that would mean take what's in the parentheses, repeat it four times, and multiply it all together. So it's not like that. <coughs> so just according to the, the way that we've agreed to write things down in mathematics in general, um, we're just going to apply this exponent directly to the thing it's above and, and do it to that number. And then the negative comes in uh, after that. So with the negative times the result of 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. And that's how we get negative 10,000. Common mistake. Uh, and I'll, if the mistake is made again, I'll just remind you again. We would need to use parentheses if we wanted it to be negative 10 four times. All right. So now we're going to evaluate an expression. What does it mean if I want to evaluate this expression when j is 10? What steps do I go through? Okay. Uh, you substitute the 10 for j first. 10 for every j that you see. You put a, j, a 10 in that place, and you see what happens. 5 times 10 minus 3 times 10 times 5. And so that there isn't any confusion, we've ag all agreed that we would use this PEMDAS thing with multiplication and division from left to right and addition and subtraction from left to right. Um, so we're not going to do 10 minus 3. We're not going to get 7 first. Okay? I could get that if I use parentheses. Right? Remember how that video talked about how every number would need a pair of parentheses if you want to be really, really non-arbitrary. Right? that? Okay. You're going to be really specific. You would need to use parentheses or agree that we're going to do things in a certain order. So a certain order would dictate that we're going to multiply first. So we'll multiply those together. We get 50. Okay. I don't want to subtract yet until I take care of this multiplication. Um, you could do it one at a time, 30, and then multiply it by 5, or I can just do it all at once, however we decide we're going to do it. Uh, how about 50 times 3? Can we do that? Right? What property is that taken advantage of? It's either commutative or associative. All right? It's the difference between 30 times 10 times 5 or 5 times 10 times 3. I think I just said that wrong. 3 times 10 first and then times 5 or 5 times 10 first and then 3. Doesn't make a difference, right? And it's the which property and why? It's negative uh, but I'm asking what property am I taking oh, advantage of? Oh. Whether I do 3 times 10, then 5, 3 times 10 getting 30, 
multiply by five, or five times 10, getting 50, multiply that by three. It's the, it's the same thing. What property is that? Associative or commutative? What's the root word of commutative? Commuting. Commuting, and what does commuting mean? Does anything move in between two, those two scenarios? No, no, it's just a matter of these two associating first, or these two associating first, it's the associative property. Either way, either way we do it, we are gonna get negative 150. And that'll give us negative 100. Uh, same thing over here. Reason I picked this one was we've got a negative that we're gonna substitute in. We've got an even power and an odd power, and I wanted to see if you kept your negative straight. So be really careful, do two times. I put parentheses, whenever I replace x, a lot of times I'll just put parentheses, and then I'll directly substitute exactly what I'm supposed to put in for x. So what I'm supposed to put in for x is negative one. That's raised to the fourth, minus four times negative one to the third. So if I multiply negative one by itself four times, what will I get? One. One. We get negative one times negative one will be positive one, and then this other two ones, negative one times negative one, will also be positive one. One times one is one. So two. What about when you multiply negative one by itself three times? Negative one. Negative one. If you multiply an odd number of times, you'll come up with that last negative one that makes the whole thing negative. So we have negative one times negative four. Positive four. And here we have um, simplify, or rather than simplify the expression, what's another way that we say that? Pretty common among algebra students. Combine like terms. Combine like terms. Can you read this? Nope, no. Okay. Let me change that color. <coughs> or just cross it out. <laughs> makes terms like? Same exponent. Exactly, those two things. Same variable, we got P and P, not P and Q, or R or M or anything. They're both P's, and they both are squared. So both P squareds. So can we put these together? Can we do four P squared minus nine P squared? Mm -hmm. yeah. We haven't multiplied yet. Is that a violation of the order of operations? Um, yeah, for one thing, you're not going to have any p squareds come out of this, and so who cares? But even if we did, even if we happen to get a p squared out of that, is that going to affect no. that we can multiply, that we can combine four p squared and nine, negative nine p squared? No. Okay. Because then you just have to combine them. Yeah, if we came up with a p squared, we just have to bring that one in there as well. Okay, good, good. It's confusion that I've seen in the past. Thought I'd check with you. Negative five p squared. Minus 12p. Okay, what are we going to do here? Distribute, multiply, plus 12p plus 21. So we do have like terms here negative 12p and 12p. What happens there? They counteract each other, they cancel each other out. They take each other to zero. So we got nothing there, plus 21. Last one. Purple. That works. Um, so now in this case, we're still just substituting values in. Um, but we just have two different ones, and we're just going to keep that stuff straight. So x is now going to be replaced with a 4. 5 times y is going to be replaced with a negative 3. Okay. And again, we do have this PEMDAS thing. We don't want to stick to it too strictly to the point that it like cripples us and it doesn't allow us to think 
Should I do 4 to the third before I multiply 5 times negative 3? Because exponents come before multiplication. Does that matter? No. These are separate things. We're not, we're not trying to combine them yet. If I do the exponent of this and multiply this at the same time, everything's going to be fine. What is 4 to the third? And what is 5 times negative 3? 15. Combine those together. We get? Any questions from these? Okay. So we've got the, the positive 10,000 question. Um, nothing else? Any questions from the homework that we didn't address in the quiz? Use it up. All right, then let's pass it this way. Take it and I put it down here. Did I lose your homework? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Hope for that. That'd be pretty hard to do. It'd be quite a talent. Okay? So I'm not saying it's impossible for me to lose homework, but between here and there and there, did I lose your homework? Do you believe that I could? I'm not gonna try to. I'd have to try to lose it. Yeah, you have I'm to not try. Gonna try. To okay? So it's there. Turn it in on time, it's there. Okay. So if later you have a zero in the grade book, how could that possibly be? You didn't turn it in. Okay, that could have happened. Did you show uh, any work? Uh well if you turn in like really lame work, then yeah. You didn't stand with. Okay, so it could be in the no name for some reason. So it could be over there. Which means all you have to do is put your name on it, stable it, whatever, turn it in. If there's not two patients? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just because we had just talked about the stapling. If it needs stapling and it's not stable, I might be back to Okay. Um, what else? I mean, what was another reason that we, I mean, realistically, what could happen that you have a zero in your book? Could it be my fault? Tyler Mitchell ripped it up and threw it away. Who? Tyler Mitchell. Tyler Mitchell just picked it up and threw it away? Yep. Wow. Brandon Johnson. Yep. Oh, no, I went. Super so went bam. That could have happened. Okay. I mean, be, be fair. Could it be my fault that there's a zero in the grade book? Yes. Why? Maybe you could have forgot that. I could have. Maybe your paper stuck to somebody else's paper, and I put a zero because I didn't see yours, but it was really just stuck to somebody else's. Okay. So we can remedy that too. How do we remedy that? Close folder. 
No, that's the Staples Ball. Go. Hey, hey Stu Dog, can I check through the pile of papers? Right. And where will you find the pile of papers? In the Somewhere back there. Stacks. Back there, the blue ones. Okay, those blue bins. Uh, that's where those will be. Okay. So if it's not in there, it's possible that I missed it. I don't miss them very often. Maybe a couple times a year. You can check back there. More likely, though, is it's either no name or you didn't turn it in. All right. And I only bring that up because it's happened several times and it's been kind of a deal. And so I want you to think consciously that you know, how could that happen? But you put it back there if you forgot your number? In the no name? Possibly. Yeah. If I'm feeling especially annoyed that day. Maybe take it out on you. Mm -hmm. But just you, not anybody else. Okay. So that makes it all Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, so 1.3, let's all take out our books that we definitely have and open up 1.3. Tyler's sure to have his. Thanks, my number. Yep. We're almost done. So you'll usually you'll have a set of weights, maybe you'll have a five pound weight, and you put it here, and put it here, and it would definitely break this line way down there. But uh, on a stronger scale, you have five weights, five pounds there, and something over here, and how do we know that weighs five pounds? Balance. 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 If it goes like this, uh, it doesn't weigh five pounds. Right? Slide it to five pounds. If it goes like this, the thing over here weighs more than five pounds. So we get it to balance out. Now when it's balanced, we know both sides are what? Equal. Both sides are equal. Okay, so how does that relate to 1.3? You can read the, the uh, title of this section. Solving equations. Solving equations. You gotta keep both sides of the equal sign and weigh it out evenly. Yeah, you gotta weigh out evenly. They start out even, they might be made up and arbitrary. But somebody made that equation, and they're deciding that both sides are equal, they are balanced before it gets to you. So it's your job to maintain that equality, maintain that balance, and not have things get off. Okay? So if we had an equation like uh, x minus 2 equals 5, okay, something like we've never seen an equation like this before. I'm going to borrow Um, so we've got an equation like x minus 2 equals 5, and we had never seen this before, right? Let's say, let's pretend we had never seen an equation, because I think all of us know how to solve this equation. But if we had never seen an equation like this before, and we got the notion to add 2 to negative 2, that's what we're doing, we're adding 2 to negative 2, um, and that way we just have x and equals 5, okay? Right. If I have some some bag that I don't know what's in there, and I don't know how much weight is in there, and I have on the other side some weights, okay, uh, and I have 
X minus two, which would be like X and then like two helium balloons or something like that that pull up on it, right? That'd be like negative weight, okay? So it goes like that. And so to, um, to counteract those two balloons pulling up on this side, I'll put two on this side and two on this side, right? adding to that. Now the total on this side should be, on this side, according to that, equal. Seven. The total on this side would be seven. Both sides being equal, this side having a negative two and a positive two, canceling each other out. We know that that's having no effect on the weight. All the effect is is being made by this mystery amount, right? And so if this mystery amount is the only thing pushing them down on this side, and seven is the amount pushing down on the other side, then the mystery amount must be seven. And we add the two to both sides, not because somebody told us always add the same thing to both sides or do the same thing to both sides, uh, and we memorized it, but because, well, we realize we have to keep both sides equal. Both sides have to be balanced. And if it ever gets out of balance, if we ever try to do something to one side that we don't do to the other, or we try to do something to just part of one side, it's all going to get out of balance. Um, so I'll remind you of that, that picture when that almost inevitably happens. You'll try to do something and it won't be, either it won't be on both sides, or you will do it but only to part of one side and not the whole thing. Okay? Um, I'll give you an example. I'm going to give you an example of, of doing it just to sum of one side and not to the other. Okay? So if I divide one side by three, I have to divide the other side by three, okay? And not just part of the other side, all of the other side. So if 3x plus 1 equals 9, here's a really common thing to do. Divide by 3 and divide by 3. Okay? I'm giving you an example of something that's not correct. If you think it's correct, you should pay attention, and if you see the error, just stay tuned. So the idea being that, okay, we can't split that 3, and so now x plus 1 equals 3, and now x equals 2. We can put 2 back in there and see that it's not correct. The thing that we did wrong there was what? What did we do wrong? Well, maybe it's just best to save divided by 3 for later. But you can divide by 3 if you want. But what do you have to do if you're going to divide by 3? You don't have to subtract 1 before you divide by 3. You don't have to. It's probably better. Probably a lot easier in the long run. You don't have to. Yeah? You have to divide the 1 by the 3. Too. Yeah. That's part of the left side of the equation, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Shouldn't the left side of the equation get divided by 3? And 1 is part of that. And so we divide everything by 3. Divide this term by 3 and this term by 3. So we would get x plus 1 third equals 3. And then maybe we realize something is the shorter way we might need to subtract 1 first. This is still right. We'll still get the correct answer. We'll still get you 2 and 2 thirds or uh, 8 thirds. It'll be the same. Um, but maybe this way isn't the way you prefer. Point being, though, you can't just divide that by three, just the three x by three, and then you know be selective about that kind of stuff. You got to divide everything uh, on the entire side by three. All right. So let's get started into some equation solving. See where where we are as a class. Okay. And uh, let me say this. So now we know the basics of equation solving. Um, that is to keep both sides equal. Okay. Um, now in the book, and, and books do this a lot, if you look on the first page of 1.3, page 18, you'll see this little box with a blue uh, banner across the top, so it's key concepts. And it says in a giant box and eight lines what it could say with an explanation of equations and what an equal sign means and what you need to make. But now they're saying uh, that there's this addition property of equality, there's subtraction property of equality, multiplication property of equality, division property of equality. They're giving you all these rules and properties. 
and you get to feeling like math is this complicated thing that you have to memorize all these rules and stuff. When we just said all that, that that blue box says, in a straightforward, really intuitive way, both sides are equal. Can I add the same thing to both sides? Yes, I can. Why can I do that? What's that? They're both equal to begin with. And if I add five, say, pounds, to use an analogy, to one side and five pounds to the other, it'll stay. It'll stay flat, even. If I subtract something from both sides, it's the same. If I multiply both sides by something, so I just take, if I multiply both sides by two, I just take duplicates of what's on both sides, pile them on top, multiply by three, make it three times as much as it was, it still should be equal. If one of these is equal to one of these, then three of these should be equal to three of these. Right? And if we divide, same reason. If I take half of this side, it should be equal to half of the other side. They're equal to start with. Okay. So, um, so I don't like what the books do sometimes, uh, and that's one example, um, making you think that it comes down to these properties and rules. It just makes sense. If two things are equal, then we should be able to do whatever we want to both sides, and we'll still be equal. Um, so we'll start out slow and see if we can challenge ourselves. Why don't you guys just take that in your on a piece of paper and work that out. I'm going to do this often. I'm going to have you work on a piece of paper. If you don't want to take any other notes than just this stuff where I ask you to work out problems, it's fine by me. I am not your brain. I don't know what works best for you. Maybe copious notes is great. Maybe just sitting and paying close attention works better for you. Right, these things down. So I always come to the class with a pen, pencil, piece of paper. Ready to go. Okay. Um, at this stage, the answer might be obvious. Maybe it's not. But if it is, um, 
it would be a mistake to think that it'll always be obvious. You don't have to show your work. You don't have to write it down. You can do it all in your head. Because at some point, you won't be able to track everything in your head. Uh, you'll need to write it down. Okay. So if you're a person like that, just a, a, a word of caution. Um, I I write everything down. I hardly ever do things in my head unless I have to. And, and then it takes me a lot longer to be sure that I'm getting the right answer. So if you can write it down and you don't have to track everything in your memory, you can check your work really quickly and that kind of thing. So for the sake of the time that it's going to be more difficult, write everything down. Okay. So what the, the thing that I'll always ask you to do when you're going to solve an equation, simple or complex, is do something that is allowed. That's all that I can urge you to do. I'm not going to sit down and tell you exactly what to do, but I'll say try something that's legal. So what's something, anything that's legal, maybe it'll be great, maybe it'll take longer. Or it'll be my short back and I stick. <laughs> what do you say? What's something we can do? Minus five. Subtract five from both sides? Yeah. Okay. Now I saw more than one person having trouble with this, this part. Okay, just be careful. Uh, we got a positive three, minus five. Uh, remember that we had this, this positive numbers and negative numbers. Three minus five is negative two. I saw a couple of eights out there, um, or negative eights. Just, I know five and three combine to make eight, but only if they're both positive or both negative. Right? Just be careful about that. Three minus five is negative two. Two P. All right, that seems good. Seems like a good move. We got, there's no five over here. Five, plus, five minus five is zero. So two P plus zero is just two P by itself. Um, and now we want P, but we know what two times P is. So how do we want half of that? So divide by two. Divide by two, P is negative one. If if you've ever been a person who says, I don't know, I just see it, I just, I can see the answer, and uh, I don't know how to explain it, I don't know how to show you that I did it, okay? I'm going to guess, and I would say with 99.9% .9 assurance, that if you've ever said that to yourself, if you've ever done that, it's because it was an equation like this, fairly simple. If five plus two of something is three, well, my brain already knows five minus two is three. That's a, a relationship that I see quite often. So I know that. And so this five minus two, well, then P would have to be a negative. So the two would now be negative. So you multiply by negative one, you get five minus two. Uh, so I didn't do any stuff to both sides, traditionally linked to algebra. I just used some mental math, some basic, reasoning and logic, and I like reasoning and logic and all that, it's, it's very good. But also, you've got to be able to justify your work. You've got to be able to do the simple things in a bit of a complex way so that you can do the complex things by the same uh, procedures. So that when it comes down to some really elaborate looking equation, if the answer is not obvious because there's variables all over the place, and not only all over the place, but raised to different powers, now it starts to get complicated and there's no way you're just seeing it, just knowing, and not being able to tell me how you got it, okay? okay. That's where that 99.9% 99 .9 assurance comes in. Uh, there might be somebody out there, like Rain Man, who sees it, just knows. Have you ever seen Rain Man? Yeah. And that reference is lost on most of you. Just a, a guy, there are people out there who just know things. Um, like in the, in the movie, he's able to find the square root of this really large number to an accuracy of like 12 decimal places and that kind of stuff. There are people who can do that. Um, but then they don't, honestly, and it's not to make a joke, like they don't know how much a candy bar costs. They don't understand what numbers are. Okay, so um, most likely not gonna be able to just see the answer. You're gonna need to get to it by a, a set of reasoning and processing that we learn with simpler equations. So I urge you to, to write these down and, and get these steps down, I guess, for lack of a better term. 
Um, so you can apply it to increasingly more difficult situations. Right. So 17, 7 minus 5 through C equals 22. So I'm going to put that to you again. Just do your work on your own paper. She made this one-sided copy because that's how she wanted to scan. She couldn't figure out the two-sided at the beginning, and then she figured it out at the end. So she knows how to do it now. Okay. But she said it that sounds like she said it to you. It said it goes to like a spam folder or something. Okay. Um, okay. So let me touch it. and that one and everything as well. Okay. Okay. Um, well, what is something that we could do? Track seven. Track seven, okay. Uh, I've, I've seen add seven before, because you see this negative and you see the seven, and you just kind of get it mixed up. So make sure you have a positive seven plus a negative 5 thirds C. So if you do have a positive seven minus seven is zero. So that cancels out on that side. We're left with negative 5 thirds C. Equals 15. Okay. So now we, we want to know C. Okay. Well, we know the 
opposite of 5 thirds times C. That would be if you took C, multiplied it by 5, and divided it by 3, and then made it the opposite of whatever that was, then you would get 15. How do we counteract that? How do we do the inverse and all that? Multiply by the reciprocal, right? Or you might think divide by negative 5 thirds. Same thing. But it's a little easier to look at if we do negative, five, uh, negative 3 fifths. Because negative times negative gives us a positive. 3 times 5 is 15. 5 times 3 is 15. So we've got a positive 15 over 15, which is just 1. So that's great. So this is just 1 times c. And over here we have negative 3 fifths. Well, you can put this over 1 if you like. I usually do that in my head anyway, just to be safe. You know, that's straight across. Uh, the 5s could cancel. I get a 3. 3 times a negative 3. Negative nine. How is that? Okay. Questions? Can I come in one on one? So that you can get more attention. That's great. Let's do that sometime. And you can ask a question now. Whatever you like. All right, so now let's do number 22. And I want to, before you do this, um, maybe you look at this and you don't know what to do exactly. Maybe you look at it and you know exactly what to do right away. Um, let's assume you look at it and, and you see how it's different from the other problems and you're not sure what to do. Maybe you are sure what to do, but let's just work from the perspective of somebody who's not sure what to do. At some point, uh, maybe soon, maybe not so soon, let's all stop, stop, stop. Looking at me. You think you're the only one doing it. It's half the class. Um, you may think that um, at some point you're going to be, at some point, the, uh, an equations uh, solution, the steps you're supposed to take, is not going to be immediately apparent. Okay, um, And you might approach that in, I, I would think, one of two ways. Wait until someone comes along and tells you how to do it. Or try your best to do it with what you know um, until you just have run out of ideas. Okay, In the end, both of these people might have somebody come along and show them the way, but one just waited around until it happened, and the other one tried until it didn't happen. Um, and that's something I would call creating some knowledge. You might even just solve it. You might have taken a problem. You had never seen the, the, that kind of problem, but you solved it anyway, because it turns out it's not that far away from problems you have seen before. And if you can uh, work your way through it, You'll never feel prouder than just creating some knowledge, figuring it out for yourself. Maybe being shown later and saying, like, yeah, I did that. That was great. Okay. Or if you have to be shown that, uh, given a little push, a little hit, that's fine. The time that you spent uh, before that is really powerful. The thing that we're used to is like this instant gratification. If I don't know it, somebody tells me it, and then I know it. Um, but then it's like that in-between really valuable. So uh, there's a, a video about that in-between time that I wanted to share with you. Let's see if I can find the right spot. There's Pete Holmes, my phone O'Brien. Anybody know who Pete Holmes is? No. Yeah. Who does? You're a liar? Okay. You lied. Always a liar. Okay. I think I have it queued up. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, turn the volume. <laughs> so I have an eye telephone. I have an eye telephone. <laughs> Thank you. Which means I have Google on my phone. I'm guessing a lot of you do. I have Google on my phone now. It's ruining our lives. I don't know if you've noticed, it's ruining life. Because we know. Every chapter of <laughs> But we're not a lick smarter for us. We just know. You don't know something? Wait. Two seconds. 
you will know. Having Google on your phone is like having a drunk know-it-all in your pocket. There's no time for mystery or wonder. You're just like, how do they make glass? And you know. But the time between not knowing and knowing is so brief that knowing feels exactly like not knowing. So life is meaningless. I've literally been in bed in the morning alone, just like, where's Tom Petty from? <sighs> but I feel nothing, because there was no time to not know. Listen to me, there was a time and I don't mean to get all Andy Rooney on ya, but there was a time that if you didn't know where Tom Petty was from, you just didn't know. And you felt that yearning and that deficit in your being, and you'd go around and ask actual people, like, where's Tom Petty from? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And now I'm impregnated with wonder, and then they go and ask people, until one fateful day, you see a girl wearing a Heartbreakers t-shirt, you rush up to her and you're like, hey, where's Tom Petty from? And she tells you, Florida. And a wave of endorphins and pleasure and meaning would wash over you and you felt something and that's how you met your wife. Do you understand? Your wedding song was Refugee. The biz laugh, thank you for... <laughs> I know Pete repeat on this, sort of. Pretty funny guy. Um, so, you see how his point relates to my point? What? <laughs> There's this time where you don't know how to do this, okay? And in an instant gratification society, you just wait long enough and someone will tell you. You could even probably Google, I guarantee you could Google this problem. And it will solve it for you, and you'll know the answer. You could even, uh, on the same website that solves it for you, it could show you the steps that it went through, and now you'll know the steps to go through. But if you don't go through that time of, I don't know, and trying to figure it out, and attempting everything that you can attempt, before somebody just tells you, Florida, there's, it's less. It's less significant. It's less powerful. Uh, to know how this equation is solved. And if you solve it yourself, you approach it and do it the, the best that you can, um, but maybe come up short. There's, there's, your brain is more ready for a bigger challenge than it would have been otherwise. Okay, so I'm gonna put this problem up there. I want you to guys go ahead and work on it. Maybe you'll get it, maybe you won't. At some point, you won't. At some point, you will be challenged. Uh, and you will need some help. But before somebody helps you and tells you, I want you to rise to the challenge and do everything you can think to try to do.
one, what did somebody do? It's uh, several different approaches. Start out with the I minus, or subtract it, two x on both sides. Okay, subtract two x on both sides. Okay, so we have now six x minus two x is four x. Two x minus two x is nothing. That's good. And nothing plus fifty nine is just fifty nine. Alright. Subtract seven from both sides. Subtract seven from both sides. There we go. This sounds like a good idea. And 59 minus 7 is 52. And then divide by 4. So 4x is 13. 13. Okay? Well, that certainly worked. How do we know that's right? We can check out there by 6 times 13 plus yep. 7. 6 times 13 plus 7, 2 times 13 plus 59, you get the same thing? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, what would you do if you had variables on both sides? Solve them one at a time. Solve them one at a time? What do you mean by that? Like one step at a time? Solve it. Well, it's not about what you have to do. But, you know, if we did wind up with x equals, um, let's, say, let's say we did this. Um, Yeah, let's say we subtracted 59 from both sides. So we get 6x minus 52 equals 2x, right? So you got an x, by its, or an x term at least on it by itself on one side, which is, is like what we've known to do in lots of other equations. And then we'll just divide by 2, right? Divide both sides by 2, we get 3x minus uh, 26. X. So x equals the thing, right? So we solve for x, we know what x is. Except for we, we don't, right? What's the problem with that? There's still three x. Yeah, like what we're saying here is that, that x is 13. If you want to know what x is, it, it's 13. Here I'm saying x is something depending on x. So now to know what x is, you have to know what x is. And all you have to do is plug in x and multiply by 3 and subtract 26, and then you'll know what x is. But you have to know what x is to start with, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a problem that you know plagues many algebra students. Um, so it's not about that we have to get it on one side. It's just that if we don't, then we have an issue where we, we don't know what x is. We have isolated x. We have found what one x is worth, but it depends on what x is. So now we could subtract 3x from both sides. Negative 26 equals negative 2x divide by negative 2, and get 13 is equal to x. Was this way the right way, and this way was the wrong way? No. no. This one definitely was shorter, a little more straightforward. This way, a little harder. But that'll happen sometimes. I'll see people do um, this problem. And maybe subtract 6x from both sides. Okay, they did that. They got 7 equals negative uh, 4x plus 59. And then maybe they subtract 7 from both sides. That's totally legal. So 0 equals negative 4x plus 52. But then we got this x over here. So let's subtract 52 from both sides. So negative 52 equals negative 4x. And then divide by negative 4. And again, x equals 13. It took more work. It took a little more work, but it wasn't wrong, right? There's a straight path of fewest steps. Um, like if I want to drive from here to Missoula, probably if I'm in the parking lot, go up Long Avenue, take a left, take a left on the, on the highway there, and go straight down to Missoula. But if I go all the way down to IGA and take a left, and get on the highway there, am I still going to get to Missoula? Yeah, if I. If I do any number of things, I could go down here and take a right at IGA and go down and take a left and go over the bridge and take a go around eight mile and 
just do all sorts of things, but I could get around, eventually get turned around and go to Missoula. It was longer, and, and you might not want to actually go that way, but you still got there. And so I'll let you circle around. I'll let you go confusing ways, uh, as long as you don't do anything that's illegal. U turn or something that you are not allowed to do, I'll let you do it. But otherwise, I'm not going to stop you from doing something very, con what might seem to some confusing or wrong or whatever. Um, okay. Let's bring in some more challenge, see where that takes us. All that up there good for algebra. Um, yeah, right there. Okay. And you just want done for A days classes right now or B days classes, but um do all of it.
Give them back fractions. All right. The only time that we'd start with fractions and end up with decimals is when approximations are all right, because they're more practical. Like if the answer were, how much money did this cost? You're not going to say 56 and 4 seventeenths dollars. Okay? <laughs> 56 points to two decimal places, that makes sense in the context. But if it's just arbitrary numbers, let's just leave them fractions. Don't make greater fractions. Don't turn things into decimals, especially when you're calculating things, because it's going to get off. If you make one-third into point three 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 three, you don't have enough time in your lifetime to write down all the threes you would have to write down to be exactly right. Okay? So leave them as fractions. Don't be afraid of fractions. Okay. What's something we can do in this situation? Distribute. Okay? Are we allowed to distribute? Yeah. Should we not distribute? Should we do something else? No. It's not really, there's no rule of what you should and shouldn't do. Okay. So we can and we will. Negative 4 and minus 8 equals, should we have to distribute on both sides? Because there's that do the same thing on both sides rule? Is that why we distribute on both sides? No. no. There's just stuff to distribute. There's not an on both sides thing. And I only say these things and ask these questions because they've come up. It's not out of nowhere. It happens. Okay, so we distributed. Are we better for it? Well, we'll see once we get to the end and see if we get an answer. Um, but one thing that's encouraging in the way that uh, math learning is structured a lot is we just learned or hopefully um, discovered how we can handle the challenge of variables on both sides. In this problem right here, the variables on both sides. What do we do? Well, we decided that probably the best thing to do would be to like, quote, put them on one side together. Okay. Well, that now these problems, let's say they are approachable. We can do these problems now. Well, after distributing, look what we have: a problem just like that. So if we're comfortable with variables on both sides, just after distributing, we're in familiar territory. So, but now what can we do? Take uh, negative three minus, uh, take negative three and then minus by four. Just subtract three. Yeah, just subtract, subtract negative three with negative four. Subtract, subtract three, 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 three N? Yeah, subtract Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I forgot the N. Oh, okay. I forgot to say N. Okay. So three N minus three N, they cancel each other out. We got zero minus 12. That's redundant. It's just negative 12. Uh, negative 4 minus 3. Negative 4 and minus 3 n. Negative 7 n. Uh, minus 8. And uh, okay, that seems to be working nicely. What next? Add 8. Could we add 12 to both sides? No. No. The answer is no. You could. The answer is you could, but. Be a little extra work. I've seen it happen. It's not illegal, but it does happen, and I don't know. It's maybe not as efficient as something else would be. So here we get, we get nothing. We get negative seven n plus zero. That's great. Negative twelve plus eight. Four. Divide by negative seven. And equals four seven. Right. So at least time for two more. Two. Um, Remember, if you're not sure what to do, try anything. 
The only things you should not try are things you know aren't mathematically legal. Okay? If it makes sense to you to multiply both sides by three halves for some reason, do that. If it makes sense to subtract 13.5, give that a shot. Try anything and write the next step down and see if you have an idea after that. Don't try and see every step in your head before you proceed. Let's do something. What something can we do? Yes. Find a common denominator. Okay, find a common denominator. So we'll just go to the next step. And uh, a lot of times students will ask me, is that the right thing to do? Is that wrong? Can I do that? If you can do it, mathematically you can do it, and it doesn't break any math rules, do it and see what happens. So let's find common denominators. What's the common denominator going to be? 15. Okay. So this will be, in the sake of time, will be 10 fifteenths minus, please stop packing up, minus 9 fifteenths m equals 4. Uh, now what? Subtract. Subtract, okay. We have like terms. They're both m's to the first power. Um, here we have 10 fifteenths m minus 9 fifteenths m which leaves us with one fifteenth of an m. So we want m, one fifteenth of an m is four. Okay, so actual m should be 15 times bigger than this. Multiply this by 15. Multiply this by 15. m is 60. Here's something else. Let's say we take that first equation, copy it over here, 
something else. What if, what if I um, put this idea out there, multiply both sides by 15? Would that be something that immediately comes to mind? Does it seem like something that's a good idea? You multiply both sides by 15? Yeah. OK, well, let's see what happens. If you multiply both sides by 15, well, clearly this side will be 60, right? So go there. Uh, this side, if we multiply by 15, we need to distribute the 15. Don't forget what we talked about earlier. Both sides, the entire side, needs to be multiplied by the same thing. So we distribute. So 15 times 2 thirds. 15 over 1 times 2 thirds. OK, so that's going to get multiplied. Minus 15 over 1 times 3 fifths, m. OK. Well, here the 3 cancels with the 15, and we're left with 5. 5 times 2, 10. Minus 5 cancels with the 15, this is with 3. 10 minus, and this 10 m, minus 9 m. Equals 60. 10 minus 9, 1. OK. Here you found a common denominator, great. Here I am multiplied by the common denominator. Because the thing about a common denominator is that 3 is a factor of the common denominator and 5 is a factor of the common denominator. All right. So if I multiply by the common denominator, I know that this is going to be a factor of that, which means it's, that 15 is going to cancel this out. 15 is also going to be, well, 5 is also going to be a factor of that thing, that common denominator. So that common denominator is going to cancel this out when you multiply. So, that's something else that you do. You multiply by the common denominator and it gets rid of all the denominators. And it's really essentially the same thing as finding the common denominator, right? Because I multiply this by 5, multiply this by 5 to get 10. Multiply this by 3, also we multiply this by 3 to get 9. It's all the same. Okay? Um, so your homework's up there. It'll be sent out to you at 3 p.m. today as well. Thank Connor for that. Messages, go out. Any questions at all? I took your phone off. There you go. It's for cross country. It's for cross country. You can say anything for smoothie making. I can do it about the coach if you want. Who do you have to go so early for? Do you want to dress out? Yeah, we have to get to Missoula. Oh, you have to go for football. And you have to go for chess? Everybody has a reason. Oh, yeah. 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 Driving to Missoula? Yeah. Because that's where practice is. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.